Hello, I am Inya Zalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to do some nice color grading in Adobe After Effects, fairy tale style. So it's a pretty cool grade as you can see right over here and if you are going to look at the original file, um, it's a big difference. So uh, of, of course the tomatoes are still CGI and if you want to know how I have done these, uh, you should check out my other tutorial, I will link it in the description. Um, and as well, if you want to work on the same footage that I am using, you will be able to download that in the description. So let's get started. I have my original file right here and I will go and move to the end. So I have the complete image here and I'll change my resolution to full here so I can see my image clearly. Um, so I'm going to click on my layer and going to press Ctrl D and delete the camera tracker. I don't need that. Um, but yeah, you're not going to have that because you're just going to use the original file, which is going to be a video file. Um, but this is actually a, a continuation, if I may say it so, uh, of the previous tutorial. Um, but you can just follow along easily, uh, following straight from this tutorial. So we have our footage, duplicated our footage, and going to effect color correction and add a tint color and add an effect called levels right here to add some contrast into our image. Something like this should work fine, I guess. There we go. And we're going to change the mode. If you don't see the mode, uh, you can change that to overlay and click to the uh, switches if you don't see it. And then press T on the keyboard and change this to 30, uh, 35%. Uh, so we can see a small difference in the contrast right here. Then we are going to add some vignette on the edges, so uh, we give the full focus on our actress here. So we're going to right click here, new adjustment layer, and we're going to rename this vignette 01. Uh, maybe we'll add another one later, um, we'll see that with the result. Choose the pen tool, zoom out a little bit, and drag something like this. So it's really going around the actress, and then press F on the keyboard, change it to subtract, and increase it to like 214% or so. Uh, well, it <laughs> doesn't have to be exact, of course. And go to effect, color correction, curves, and then just drag down this curve. So you make it darker around the edges here and maybe even feather it out much more. So something like 400. And then you will see the edges um, become differently and it's, it's giving it a nice look. Then what we want to do is click on our first layer and duplicate that bring it on top and also delete this and rename this to blue color and what we will do now is go to effects keying and we're going to choose the color range tool and now if we're going to click on this uh, pipette tool with the plus and you click on a red color and you choose it again and choose a few red colors okay well actually you have to reset it and start with this first color, so you pick red and then you can continue with the uh, plus one uh, here. So click on different parts of here where you see that uh, it's not really picking the color. Um, take away the browns because we don't want them to be uh, something like this and add a fizziness of 40%. And now this effect isn't going to do much. Um, well, actually it's doing already something. Um, but the reason why we have done it is to isolate um, everything else but the red color. So now if we're going to uh, choose an effect like color correction, well, how uh, to save, uh, effect color correction, hue and saturation, by the way, you should enable auto save. It's going to help you um, if you have a crash because um, I lost a lot of projects that way. And that way you're going to be able to change the colors of the seen without changing the reds but we can see that this red is still being changed so i think i need to um, disable this effect and then click over here okay and now enable this effect again now you will see that it doesn't affect it anymore so now the only things that are affected is everything but the the red and we're going to increase the saturation here and change the color to a blue color something like this increase it really much uh, like a lot and then play around with these settings here and see what they do. So it's really uh, playing around here. There we go. And see what everything is doing. Maybe changes to 20, 130, 220. 
and now we're getting some nice isolation right here and we're going to change the color of course to something a little bit less intense and then we're going to disable this hue and saturation and add a curves effect here and the curves we're going to take down the highlights like by a lot like something like so because right now if we if we check at the uh, hue and saturation without the curves we're going to see that this is white and it's just looking fake so uh, we're going to curves add some contrast right over here and then start adding some blues like so take away some of the reds and then play around with the green see what that does maybe add some greens in the highlights and delete some in the shadows add some more blue and maybe even less highlights and more contrast so now we have this as a difference and if we're going to position this well actually uh, the contrast is a bit much okay and if we're going to position this above the hue and saturation and then enable the hue and saturation afterwards it's going to look a lot better instantly so you can see this looks already pretty cool and now if we drag down the color hue right over here this is the color that we are after actually so now we have our blue color without uh, the red taking it uh, as well because if we're going to disable the color range effect we're going to see uh, this just looks uh, terrible actually so you need to isolate the reds and you can take a little bit more time in isolating it perfectly add more fizziness well fizziness is okay um, but play around with the settings add a little bit more of the uh, red parts and so on and so on you can also rotoscope things if it doesn't work out for you and you can see it's it's looking pretty nice and then another thing you can do is press T on the keyboard and just drag down the opacity like 85 or so and that way it's going to look a little bit more realistic as well. What I'm going to do now is change the red color here because actually uh, for the pink juice video I wanted it to be um, pink uh, of course so I will add a new adjustment layer and hue saturation and go to effect color correction hue and saturation and right over here we're going to the red channel maybe make this a little bit bigger so we have some more space to play around with okay and then we can uh, add like saturation if you want to and change it to a more pink color maybe the blue is all also a little bit too intense so we're going to add like a little bit more highlights here so once you have done something like that and change the saturation to 25 we can add another adjustment layer of course and we're going to call this vignette 0, 02 so you can see color grading is just stacking up layers of different things and we'll choose the ellipse tool here and drag our ellipse tool like so and subtract it again F on the keyboard and feather it out and go to effect color correction curves and curve it out a little bit like so that's going to bring a little bit more focus towards the middle of our screen uh, maybe this is a little bit too intense but you can see again a big difference and it makes it really nice uh, another thing you can do is duplicate our, orig our, our original layer and we're going to bring this all the way on top again and what we're going to do now is we're going to mask out our face so uh, you should take the ellipse tool and then just mask out the face like so and you could take the pen tool and also start um, taking a little bit of the of the arm and hands like so and it's completely up to you to uh, do this perfectly so I'm just going to demonstrate this for this tutorial I'm not going to do this completely so uh, you should do it like that very roughly and there we go and if we press M on the keyboard we can create keyframes and then you should move backwards and animate your mask so that's actually how I have done it in the video and that's how you should do it if you want to achieve something similar um, because um, I couldn't pick the you can also you can always try to 
key out colors um, but because of the woods uh, wood is also a little bit orange and skin color is also a little bit orange so I couldn't really isolate the skin colors without harming uh, the woods around it so I had to do it um, by rotoscoping so I have uh, rotoscoped all her uh, skin colors out so just like so and there we go so do this perfectly for your example I'm just uh, showing how you should do it and then it animates itself um, and just try to follow along everything and then press F on the keyboard and feather of course every single uh, mask here so it should be uh, something like 60 and you should be able to see that it's uh, looking pretty good so we can see it's getting it's a little spill so what you can do is press M and then again press M M on the keyboard so double tap M and that will bring up all the options for the masks and then we can bring down the expansion until you see that there is no spill so we only have the center of our uh, of her face and then again here feather it and also bring down the expansion a bit maybe here it shouldn't be that much uh, because it's an arm um, and then again here and bring down the expansion and now if we're going to see at the image uh, well the arm isn't perfectly done but uh, it's okay for now uh, we're going to see that uh, it's going to change the skin color and it's going to make it look a lot better so uh, what you can do as well is press T on the keyboard bring down the opacity so it's uh, not that obvious that it's uh, been rotoscoped if you're going to look at the example you're barely going to see it and another thing you can do is click on the mask to comp go to effects color uh, color correction and hue and saturation and change the saturation of the uh, of the hue to something warmer uh, so something like this I guess and a little bit more saturation while well, this is way too much um, but like in the orange tones not the yellow something like this looks pretty nice now we can see it's making the shot a lot better so you can change it to 50 maybe even 40 percent and the difference is huge so um, this is what actually changes a low budget production to um, a high production value in my opinion if I see a shot and someone tries to simulate a day uh, becoming night scene and the skin tones are just like you have this and then you have this without that now well, without without this here this doesn't look good this this just looks very cheap and all the colors are similar and it's very important to change color contrast so if you have a dark scene try to light your characters actually um, and don't, so you don't have to do it uh, by rotoscoping but try to change the color contrast because the, the background is kind of blue and the skin tones are kind of yellow uh, well uh, kind of orange and then you get that nice contrast because blue and orange are two opposite colors so um, you can also add a little bit more blue here maybe I'm not sure um, or yeah maybe change your opacity just a bit like so and then what you can do is add another adjustment layer again and now we're going to do something cool as well and it's also going to have a big impact and that's an unsharp mask we're going to add that on top of everything and add like 100 um, it's going to add a little bit of sharpness in the background in the trees but if we're going to duplicate that and we're going to change the radius to 25 and we're going to um, take the amount down to something like 30 or maybe 25 we're going to see a big difference as well so you can see um, that really nice contrasty look and yeah this is the the difference between not sharpening and sharpening our image and we can also bring down of course the um, opacity just a bit um, but now we're getting a really nice image and then and the last thing we could do is go to effects adjustment layer rename this to glow and go to effects stylize and add a glow on top of everything and then we are going to bring down our threshold until we have the complete sky and we're going to duplicate our glow and increase it like so and there we go and then of course bring down the intensity because it's way too intense right now maybe one point one
by the way, if you get difficult results than me, you can still get similar results uh, like this if you didn't do it. Um, but in my previous tutorial, I told you that I'm working in a linear workspace, which means 32 bits per channel, sRGB color, color and uh, linearized workspace. And this is going to uh, give different results uh, if I play around with these settings. Uh, it's like glow is really intense in linear workspace instead of uh, the regular one. So uh, if you didn't do that, uh, you will just have to tweak your settings and not copy what I'm doing. Uh, if you did do it um, because you have checked out my previous tutorial, then great, and uh, that's awesome. So this is pretty cool, and on top of everything, we can do still the last thing. We can keep uh, doing this uh, until we get bored and bored of it. But we can add a little bit more contrast, maybe um, something like this, and add more blues in the shadows, less in the highlights. And add more reds in the highlights. Oh, red in the highlights, and less in here. And of course, this is way too much. But if we're going to toggle it on and off, okay. And then we can uh, change it to an overlay and toggle it down. Maybe you can also change this to a screen so it brightens up the face or maybe add and increase the opacity a bit. And there we go. So now the contrast is a little bit too much, but like 45. And yeah, there we go. Uh, we have our video. Um, so if we're going to look at the original, this is what we came from and this is our result. So it's actually really nice. Um, then what you can do is um, pre-compose everything, so color graded shot, okay? And then we can change our composition settings to um, height 800 and scale, um, well, actually, I shouldn't do this. Uh, composition settings and, and click, uh, check off the lock aspect ratio, change the height to 800, reposition this. And now we have like a widescreen movie. Um, and if you want to see how it's uh, with borders, create a new composition, make it full HD. And then just uh, pick the original and put it into the new composition here. And now we're going to see how it looks uh, like in uh, widescreen on TV. So this is looking pretty neat in my opinion. And this is the result. One last thing uh, that you should do if you have uh, removed noise or if you don't have a lot of noise with your camera, uh, which is a good thing by the way, but you always need a little bit of grain to make it realistic. So get back into the um, original and add an adjustment layer here. We're going to add noise and grain, add grain, final output and change the intensity to 0.1 maybe and the size to 0.05. And if we're going to zoom in, this is something that looks pretty nice. Intensity can be also 0.05 or maybe 01. And if we toggle it off and on, okay, maybe 02. So we get a little bit of, of uh, grain in the, in the image and that's going to make it look filmic. Uh, <laughs> So this is going to make it look a lot better and also it's going to uh, make it all blend together a little bit better in my opinion. So and now we have our final grade. We're barely going to notice the grain but it needs to be there to make it look alive, to make it look great. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you don't exaggerate these things. Um, speaking of exaggerating and color grading, this is quite exaggerated. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos. And yeah, definitely leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.